Hi, my name is Simon from writtenlegalenglish.com and in this video I want to introduce to you a fantastic plain English resource that you might not have you might not be aware of even though it's been around for a very long time. And this is called the FAA Plain Language Toolkit. Now the FAA is the Federal Aviation Administration. So why are they producing plain English materials? Well, after the Plain Language Act 2010 was enacted in America, it forced federal agencies to write in plain English on their websites and in their communications with their clients or customers or anyone that they're writing to. And so in response to this, the FAA produced this wonderful little document that you can keep by your computer so it's there all of the time and in this video I want to go into a little bit more detail about why it's such a good resource, why you should print it out and why you should have it by your computer. So the first thing I want to do is show you what it is and this is what it is. It's just a two-page PDF, something that you could print, duplex on two sides and you can fold up so it stands next to your computer or you can pin it up on the wall behind your monitor you can have it somewhere close by now why is this such a good resource well in the world of plain english there are lots and lots of guidelines and lots and lots of rules and so when you begin to find out about plain english it can be a little bit daunting and you can get lost in the many guidelines that there are certainly on my course i've got 31 lessons of which 27 introduce new material new ideas new guidelines if you pick up a book by brian garner or by kimball or by Butt or any of the legal english doctrine writers you'll see that there are chapters and chapters and chapters and chapters brian garner's book is 50 units long so it's easy to get lost in all of those guidelines and so having a simple document which reminds you of the main right the main good writing rules is a good thing it helps focus your mind and so the toolkit puts these together on one page of a4 so it's a good solution just to remind you all of the time what the main plain english writing rules are and because it's on two page, uh, two sides of a4 you can print it out and you can have it close by and this is really good for me because i am a visual learner you have visual learners and you have auditory learners i am a visual learner which means if i see something then i'm more likely to remember it so i have this by my computer i see it all of the time i look up above my web camera and it is there so i've got the rules cut always in my face i've got the rules always somewhere where i can see them and so this is a non-stop reminder just focusing focusing my uh, my efforts when i'm writing on what the most important rules are and there are links to lots of fantastic resources so even though you start off with a simple document you can then link to lots of different resources and find out a lot more things so those are the reasons why it's such a good thing and why you should print it out and of course the link to the fa the toolkit and to the website where you can find that link are below this video so let's go into a little bit more detail and analyze the rules which are presented on the toolkit so in this section which is part of the second page of the toolkit it reminds you why you are writing and it's always good to be reminded why you are writing because if you are reminded why you are writing your writing is already a lot better so it's got some questions before you write know your audience and your purpose so who are you writing to and why are you writing write to each audience separately don't send generic information to everyone write for your reader not everyone so that reinforces that second point you're writing to the reader to deal with a specific issue the issue which is relevant to that reader think clearly then write plainly very succinct way of saying think of the simple message and don't confuse that during the writing process which is very often what lawyers do when they are writing something down so they have a, like, a clear message in their heads, but by the time it gets onto paper, it becomes quite difficult to understand. Think of what the reader says. And it's important, this choice of vocabulary, what the reader is saying to you. The reader is saying, tell me what I need to know. Not, 
what the writer thinks um, the reader should know, but think about it from the reader's point of view. What does the reader actually need to know? And very often that's a different set of answers to what the writer might assume the reader needs to know. And that, of course, means that you have to know your audience, the context, the background, why you're writing, how you can create value, etc., etc. So there's a whole load of issues behind that, those, that simple idea. Write to me, not a group. You always connect better with the reader when you're writing to that reader individually, not as just part of a group. Anticipate my question. So this is a good part of the planning planning process. So you're writing something and then you're going to say, well, the reader will want to know this or the reader will have this question. Let's anticipate that. Let's build that into my first uh, draft, not the second response, the third response, the fourth response. And don't confuse me. Speak to me plainly. Organize and plan your writing in a way that makes logical sense. Think about your goals, and your goal is always to help the reader because the reader is always more important than the writer. Find out what they need, understand what they find, um, what they find the first time, and use what they find. Important advice, just to remember that your writing is reader focused. Not it's not a, an attempt, or it's not a, the chance for you to show off your writing skills. And then think about your values. Challenge every word, simple and less are better. Make it readable and understandable. Don't dumb down, clear up. And that, that final point is a really good point because lots of people think that plain language, uh, writing in plain English is just making things simple so that, pe so that um, it's using baby language and it's inappropriate language for business or legal contexts. This is not the right way to think about plain English. Plain English looks to clarify simplify and uh, make the reader's life as easy as possible. In the second part of that PDF, it talks about the guidelines for how to format a document and the basic guidelines for how to structure your language and which vocabulary to use. Now, I'm not going to focus too much on those sections here. These are rather a reminder of the basic plain English guidelines. And it's always good to see them because it's always good to refer to them quickly. Just as a reminder, there are some examples on here so you can see what plain language is. And it's a fantastic resource just to have within iShot. It's the third bit that I want to concentrate on, and that's what plain language gives you. Plain language gives you comprehension and compliance, so your clients and customers will understand and they will comply with what you want. It will give you better customer satisfaction because your clients and customers will be happier that they get a document that they can understand. And there are clear business benefits which have been shown for, uh, for plain language, which saves, uh, which gives you time and gives you money for your customers and your staff. Professor Kimball writes more about this. But there are a couple of caveats about what plain language doesn't give you. And that means it's not just correct spelling and grammar or that plain language doesn't, the, the aim of plain language is not just to think about spelling and grammar. Plain language is much bigger than that. So this is a reminder that plain language is a bigger, as a, is an issue with a much wider scope than just pronunciation and, oh, not pronunciation, but a spelling and grammar. Using plain language doesn't automatically give you success. You have to use plain language, yes, but you also have to think about your reader as well. If you're using plain language and it's not focused correctly, then you're not going to get success in your web page or in the documents that you write. And plain English, plain language does not automatically give you the right emotional tone. So it's not always appropriate to use the active voice in everything that you're saying. There are contexts perhaps where the passive voice is better, or there are contexts perhaps where you should prefer nouns over verbs. There are some contexts, so that means that you have to have a wider appreciation of why you're writing, the context for, your, uh, for why you're writing, and be aware of the bigger picture in general. If I return to the first page of the plain language toolkit, you can see here on uh, there are some plain language references. Sadly, some of these links are broken now, but a lot of these links work. And if you want to find out more about plain language, then you can click on these links from the PDF and it will take you to more web pages where you can find out more about specific problems. So this document, it 
tells you the basic guidelines, but it also uh, gives you the paths or directions to find out more about plain English, which is when you're considering two sides of A4, it's a pretty impressive achievement. Okay, so that's the reason why you should use the FAA Plain, La Plain Language Toolkit. So there's a link below the video, download it now, print it out, put it by your computer, read through it on a regular basis, and have it there as a constant reminder for you to write in plain English.